Why, hello everybody. Welcome back to Josh Gets Lost. We are making our final preparations today for getting ready to head to the end of the game. But that won't happen in this episode. This episode, we are going to focus on finally getting our mending villagers so that our armor and tools and weapons can all be fixed up uh, for the low, low price of experience points. And of course, it wouldn't be fair to make a villager as important as our mending villager without a place for him to live. All right, so I've got, I'm ready here. I've got some emeralds. I've got uh, a book uh, so that if we are able to get this mending trade, we can lock it in and be sure not to lose it. And man, my tools are really hurting. So I got to get this done fast. All right, let's go get us a villager. Now, remember we did go all the way out to a swamp because, uh, you know, Mojang is requiring us to use swamp villagers sometime here in the future to get mending. So we thought we'd do it in this world. Uh, so let me head on up to our villager uh, breeder and get some of that. I will need to, however, first get some iron to make a minecart uh, in order to get our villager out of the breeder because I actually have not gotten any out of the breeder that we've made. Uh, five iron and that little U-shaped pattern will give us a minecart. We'll be placing that on our little pickup system to get villagers out of the breeder. And hopefully we can get a swamp one fairly soon. Uh, it's not guaranteed that it's going to be the first one on the edge there, so... Uh, let's see. All right, we're gonna, it's gonna go up and grab them out of the glass. I don't think the swamp villagers first, so we put down a boat because I'm gonna have to, well, let me get it out of the wall so I don't kill anyone. I'm gonna put any extra villagers we have in some boats in here if uh, we don't get that swamp villager right away. And it's a plains villager. Uh, looks like you're going into the boat. Boom, there we go. Try, try, try again. And another plains villager. You know where he's going. Well, he's going that way, but eventually he's going into the boat. Come on. Boat, boat, go in the boat. Oh, you were so close. You were so close. There you go. Now you have a buddy. All right. This is the third time the charm. Nope. How in the world do we keep getting these Plains Villagers? Uh, guess you're going into a new boat. That way. There you go. All right. It may take us longer to get uh, an actual Swamp Villager than it does to get our mini trade later. We'll find out. All right. There we go. Try number four. We have one of our wonderful lily padded headed swamp villagers ready to go with us and we're going to get him out here uh and i'm just going to put that down uh oh but it's night let me go ahead and sleep all right let's see what he rolled and we're going to keep track up on the left corner of the screen what we do frost walker uh that exists i guess luck of the c2 not too bad but we already have a pretty good fishing pole we don't need to replace fortune three that's one we would want but the price is a little high so not only do they give different uh, enchantments and possible trades, but they give different prices. So getting the right enchantment plus a good price is the key. Uh, Feather Falling I do want, but that was only Feather Falling 2 and it was pretty expensive. Let's see this one, Lure 3, uh, nope, another fishing pole ones. We're just gonna skip all those because I'm never gonna lose that fishing pole. Feather Falling 3, that was tempting. Death Strider. Uh, that's a good price, but I already have it on my boots. Uh, in fact, let me just double check here. Yep, do not need that right now. We are focused on mending. All right. Sometimes you get a trade that just sells books. You may get some enchanted books later from that trade, but you know you always want to get it guaranteed first. Punch, that's for bows, don't need that. Another bookcase trade. Piercing, that is for crossbows. Very limited use case. Another bookcase trade. 14 uh, looks like we're at. Bookcase trade. Getting really tired of these bookcase trades, buddy. I said I was tired of them. There it is. Mending and we're gonna lock this in. 
10 emeralds is actually the lowest possible starting price that you can get for mending. This is amazing. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what that was. Editor's note, there was 17. 17 times uh, to get mending. All right, I'm doing my happy dance. This is awesome. We got 10, we've got it locked in. Now he's gonna be expensive, so we're going to uh, do a little bit of curing later like we did with those uh, igloo villagers uh, to get that price down. But what a great starting point. Mending for 10. See, I knew if we got a swamp villager, things would work out for us. I guess it pays. Uh, we could have also, if we didn't have the emeralds to pay for the book, we could have just traded the paper there and that would have also locked in that mending trade. Uh, those wouldn't, neither of those trades will change once you lock them in. Uh, so we could have done that as well. Uh, but we are going to uh, take our mending book here and go get uh, some of our tools fixed up. I did finally the other week put an anvil up in my house so I didn't have to go all the way down uh, to name tag things or in this case to add mending to our silk touch pickaxe. Uh, we're going to add that there. Beautiful. It's going to cost us a few XP points, but that is okay. Boom. Now we can go fix that up down at our experience farm, AKA the spider spawner down below. All right, let's head down there. And you can see here uh, as we're down here at the spider farm, as I hit these guys and collect the XP orbs, uh, they're going to my pickaxe. You can put it in your offhand by hitting the F key. Uh, and there we skipped ahead and now uh, you can see my pickaxe is fully repaired. And now that I'm killing them, uh, you can tell the mending has completed because when I get the XP, it will add to my little green XP meter and not to the pickaxe anymore. All right, we wanna get these prices down because we need to put mending on just about everything we own. Uh, so we're gonna be making our own fermented spider eye, which is a spider eye plus a brown mushroom, plus a sugar. Boom, we got that. We're going to take some of the glass bottles that we've gotten for fishing and fill them up uh, to put in our brewing stand uh, to make a potion. We put some gas powder in here, I accidentally made a different potion before this. Uh, so that's why that was already going. And it is done. Let's uh, check out what we've got going here. All right, this is not a weakness potion, but we can't force villagers to drink. So we're gonna add some gunpowder and turn this into a splash potion. Uh, we're also going to need a golden apple uh, to be able to cure this villager once he has been zombified and weakened. Uh, so let's go ahead and get these out. You can actually use these for several villagers at once, but we've got plenty of these ingredients, so we'll just use all of them right now. Now, you want to make sure that your game is set to hard difficulty when you do this. If it's on easy or normal, uh, you will have the difficulty where there's a chance your villager might die when he gets bitten by the zombie. On hard, he will always turn into a zombie. So that's very important to double check that side. Even if you play in easy or medium, turn on hard when you're doing the villager curing because you don't want your 10 emerald mending villager to get killed by a zombie. That just doesn't make sense. All right, we are letting night fall, letting some monsters spawn, I'm trying to get rid of all the annoying ones. No, I want to keep the zombie. Uh, I do not want the baby zombie. Uh, those are my nightmare, and I do not want the skeleton. Uh, what are you you all dressed up for there, skeleton? Uh, is the regular zombie coming? There he is. Come on, buddy. Oh, the baby. Bad baby. All right, come on. Ooh, let me get some of these goodies while I'm over here killing things. No! Uh, zombies can pick up bows uh, sometimes, but they can't use them, so I'm not really worried about him shooting me. <laughs> That'd be pretty, pretty awesome, though, if you could give bows to zombies. Uh, that would make for some fun... Uh, some fun traps you can set. Now what I want to do is try to get him in here uh, and kind of trap him in a zone here with our villager. So I'm going to kind of just lure him into a little hole. I, I've run out of dirt. I did not plan this out very well. It was a little impulsive. Uh, so we're going to use some of these deep slate bricks, I guess, to complete our little uh, chamber. Uh, I am not really sure what my plan is here now. I did not really think this through very well. Um, might as well get that gunpowder. That'll be useful later. All right, he's coming that way. Now, he will focus on you, the player, as his first priority if he can see you. So what you want to do is trap him in with the villager and then be able to leave and get somewhere where he can't see you. So I'm going to try to uh, get up here and get him, just kind of push him into this too high little pit with the villager and see my shield should help me push, but nope, he has put, nope, wrong way. Uh, let me get out of here. 
You gonna come back up, buddy? Hello? Hello? Oh, sir, sir. Uh, nope, nope, no. I don't wanna go around this again. Ugh. This is fun. I should just use a minecart like I normally do, but I'm trying to be lazy and just freestyle things and they're not working. All right, uh, something happened to that zombie. Um, so now I've got a new one and, oh yeah. They can go into boats with villagers. That, that would have been much easier just to get him in there the whole time. I'm an idiot. How many of you in the comments were yelling at me at home to just get him into the boat? Now, I do want to be careful though, now that I have him in the same boat as the villager, uh, I will have to actually kill him after he infects our villager. Uh, so that way, once the villager gets healed, he doesn't turn the zombie uh, again. Uh, so maybe I can catch another one here. Oh, they, never mind. they're already. We're gonna pretend that I thought about this more and that I didn't do this as poorly as I did. That's that's what we're all gonna do. Uh, I am gonna remember here though to uh, block off the, uh, the top of there so that way when I turn it to daytime here, they do not burn up. All right, carefully using my F3B to see the border so I shoot the zombie and not my villager. One of them must have some thorns on their armor because they just hit me back from quite a distance there. All right. Now we got this guy ready to go. It's always funny, villagers can get these armors when they get zombified, but then when you uh, heal them, the armor just disappears into nothing, like it never existed. It's kinda kind of crazy how physics work in Minecraft. All right, hit him with the splash potion, hit him with the apple, right click, and it'll make that sound. You can see with the splash potion, not only did I hit him, but you can see from the particles and the effect on me that I hit myself. So something always to be aware of while you're doing this is you can't hit yourself. All right, I have been mining stone here. Oh, and sounds like he is done. Uh, that little sound that you can hear if you're nearby. He is cured, you can see the particles. And now that 10 mending book is now a one emerald mending book, which means uh, we can sell paper or other goods and get quite a few of these to put on all our armor and tools. Uh, so let's go ahead and use, look at that. <laughs> We've only got a few emeralds. Uh, we do wanna not go too fast here because you can see he is beginning to level up and we kind of waste the leveling up if we spend too much at once. Uh, oh, my stuff fell out of my pockets there while I was talking to this guy. I think they try to rob you while you're talking to them. I think that's what happens there. All right, we're going to watch as the pink particles come which means he is leveling up. Ooh, and he's gonna give us a lantern trade and a book trade. So we have some ways uh, to spend emeralds as well as another way to get emeralds, which between all my cows and sugarcane, I've got quite a few books here. Uh, I may just trade some of them in at this point uh, for emeralds, which I honestly don't know if I've ever done before because usually I wanna keep all my books as much as possible. And one more, we'll level him up again. Let's see where this goes. And he's gonna give us a glass trade. Ooh, and he'll let us trade one ink sack uh, for an emerald, which being right here on the ocean is not the worst trade ever. All right, it is time for our landscaping break of the video where I remind you, if you've been watching, to like and subscribe. Uh, today we're going to be adding some things now that we have some iron uh, to our house and the surrounding area that we couldn't add before, namely these hanging signs, which you can craft out of stripped logs uh, and iron bars. And with that, we're gonna make kind of a little hanging downy feature uh, from these chains on the porch. Uh, probably bring these in just a little bit. Uh, trying to figure out the exact size is a little bit of a, a thing. Let's go, let's, can we get that? Nope, not only is it not straight, but we also accidentally put a letter on it. There, we, ooh, there we go. And uh, let's add another one on the other side. If I can get around here. Oops, I need to pick that up. Minecraft, fix the inventory problem. Uh, I'm going to add another back. Uh, tr 
trap door here to make the back of our bench. Uh, then we're gonna add maybe one more set of these on the left as well. First, let's get this one straight in there. Perfect. Yeah, that'll be, that'll look really nice if we can get those last trap doors in. And of course, like I always had to make some more. All right, there we go. Can I get to this side? Perfect. Boom. Uh, we have a cool porch swing now. I really love the way that looks. And we're gonna add a swing here in the back under our uh, pergola that we made. This one will be a little smaller. It'll kind of just be like a little swing, like maybe something kids would play on. Uh, you can just right click signs now in Minecraft and edit them, which is nice. Before uh, the last update, you actually had to uh, tear them completely down and replace them. So good time for that feature right there. There we go. Fun little, little green swing we got going on in the backyard. So I went out uh, by our swamp village uh, because it was Halloween and I decided to catch a black cat. Uh, their black cats can only spawn in one spot in Minecraft and that is in the witch hut that is found uh, there in the swamp village. And some of you may have seen that uh, on the previous videos uh, that there was a witch hut there. Uh, so I came back over here and got my black cat, brought it back over near this wonderful little calico one who was protecting my portal area and now they fell in love and had a baby. Oh, look at the little kitty. All right, time to make a place for our villager to live, uh, which means I've got to make lots of blue concrete using my incredibly uh, advanced concrete farm here. Basically just running water and then some obsidian behind uh, where I'm placing the powder so that when I break it, I don't accidentally break multiple blocks behind it and mess up the water system. If you do this right, you can actually kind of just click your right, your right mouse click and your left kind of at the same time and make those. Um, we're going with blue and white for this structure. Um, the reason why we're going with blue, which is probably would normally be a color you'd avoid for what I'm building here, is because I accidentally made a bunch of blue concrete powder when I was trying to make blue glass for the iron farm, for the underwater portion. And I was like, I better just use it. So that's why, that's why it's blue, in case you're wondering what the thought was. Got a nice stone foundation over here on this uh, stony point across the little river inlet from our land. We wanna move the villagers a little bit farther away so that way uh, they're not always loaded and kind of uh, just interfering with our world while we're in it and doing things. So we're gonna be putting them a little bit off site from our main farms and other things that we've got going on there in the city. Now we're gonna add, start working on this blue area and we're basically just making circles. Now there's a few different ways that you can make circles in Minecraft. One is just to eyeball it. Uh, another thing is I literally just usually have on my computer a PDF that you can find online that's like circles one through 64 uh, and shows you different like uh, pixel art or um, cross stitching is another area you can find a lot of designs from um, and usually use that to find circle shapes and patterns and just use that little PDF to give me a guide for how big do I want the circle, and then it'll give me some a few different circle shapes for each of those guides. Uh, so you can use that as well. Uh, that's another tool. There's also some more advanced uh, modding tools that you can use to actually like map out circles, but I kind of like the old fashioned way of just looking up a design and going with it. But once you've built a bunch of them, you kind of just get a feel for what makes a circle, right? We're gonna alternate white and blue going up here every couple of things uh have you guessed what it is yet over here on the stony point next to the ocean it's gonna be striped with white and blue yep it's a lighthouse that's what we're building and of course you usually wouldn't build a lighthouse out of blue because the sky can be blue the water is blue and you want the lighthouse to kind of stand out from those things but again i had lots of blue concrete so that's that's why we're doing what we're doing. Plus, I love blue, so sue me. All right, let's get that. Boom. All right, we're gonna keep making a little bit more uh, smaller and smaller circles as we go up every little bit uh, to sort of give it uh, that kind of tapered look that you might see on a lighthouse. All right. 
it. Let's get this all done. And some more layers of white here. All right, let's go check this out. You can see my elegant uh, down elevator where I just jump off onto the water there. All right, get some distance and... Nope, I hate it. It is way too, it is not tapered. It is like just like almost like a telescope jutting in there. Um, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna have to make these each section a little taller, I think. Uh, just kind of tear these out and extend everything up by maybe a uh, section or two. This can be fun trying to navigate around this, especially uh, early game where you don't have super powerful shoes that can protect you from falling great distances. But nevertheless, uh, the shift key helps a lot. Uh, if you're holding shift on a block, it will keep you from falling off the edge. All right, let's get the white going up here. All right, we are now at the top. Let's make, well, let's not do that. Let's make sort of a interior platform. We're gonna be putting some lights and windows up here uh, and finishing off the circle pattern here at the top, just a little bit wider uh, than what is below. All right, now let's take a look. That's gonna look much nicer, I think, with the top that I have envisioned. So let's, let's keep this and uh, we're gonna head back over here and make some redstone components. We're making some more of those redstone lamps uh, that I used in the spider farm, some repeaters, and we're also gonna make some observers and some black tinted glass for this. So let's go ahead and place these here. And let's finish off the top here. I'm gonna make it kind of pointy and see how this looks. I'm not 100%, nope. I uh, do not like the pointy top. That is not my favorite. Let's flatten it out a little bit. And let's make sure we have a way to get back inside. All right, I uh, kind of see it from there. I think I like that. Let's get a little farther. <gasps> yep, it kind of looks like a old British bowling hat, but for the time period that we're kind of looking at, uh, it looks like a little bit to clean up there by the lights, but um, the top of it, I really like that shape. That That is looking good. Uh, I think it really fits the vibe of the era and yeah, I like I like it. Let's, let's go a little farther away, just to double check. Hey villager, I'm looking at your new house. I like it and I love, I'm so glad that I put it farther away on that point. Uh, cause I almost put it on the nearest point to our base and it just wouldn't have been as cool to look at from that close. All right, so basically here, what you have is you're gonna have a bunch of repeaters that will be endlessly powering around in a circle. Uh, and these observers that are below the lights will see the, the power as it goes around in the circle loop and detect it and power the lights. So we're gonna quickly uh, power it once and then replace that. Uh, it's going really fast right now. So what I'm gonna have to do is click some of the repeaters, uh, right click them to slow them down, but I'll fix that off camera. Let's uh, work on our villager's house. Uh, we made a little spiral staircase here coming down and now we're going to be putting a nice little spruce slab floor in here. You know, add a little more, a little more hominess to this. There's definitely a cave somewhere right below this because I've heard zombies and spiders the whole time I've been built, building. Sleep. Don't growl at me. Let's add that around the border here. Kind of separate the middle section from the outside walls. And add a little one there just for fun. All right, and then we're gonna fill in all of this with those spruce slabs as well. If I can learn to place them in the correct spot. Nope. <laughs> we're gonna pretend I did double place one of those and we have a floor. All right, we have added a little bit of uh, trap doors and a gate to sort of baby proof 
that stairway, keep the villager from walking up it. Uh, he won't be able to get around this, I don't think. Uh, if he does, uh, we'll have to do some more fixes there, but I kind of like the way that looks, but I don't really want to spend the trap doors to make a full rail all the way up to the top. Uh, let's add some lanterns. What's a lighthouse without some lanterns for the lighthouse keeper? Uh, let's actually put those in the corners there. Thank you. You can see we've added a little trap door to the window so nothing like a baby zombie could get inside ever. Let's add a bed so our villager can sleep if he wants to. Maybe a little uh, sort of table looking thing here. That'll work. I don't really want to make stairs right at the moment. Uh, when your inventory is full, you start making decisions about what is easiest to do versus hardest at times uh, here in Minecraft. Uh, let's add another shelf over here. We can always add maybe another lectern uh, over there if we add more villagers out here to the lighthouse. Let's give a little bit of a bottom thing here underneath these exposed concrete. Let me fix that. All right, buddy, you ready to go to your new home? Whee! Thank you so much for taking me to this wonderful house. Oh, no problem, no problem. All right, you're gonna make this easy, right? And just walk right into the house. Totally did not cut out a minute of him wandering around aimlessly. Um, you can't, oh, I placed the door wrong. I. The open is shut and the shut is open. All right, let's carefully do that. Uh, lock you in there with the gate. The door alone will not keep him in. So uh, let's put a gate in there so he doesn't escape. Where are you? Oh, you're right there. Hey buddy, your new home. Don't you love it? All right, let's make it a little more uh, homey and add some light outside. Uh, where could I put, there we go. That corner is a very natural spot for a lantern and that should light up the whole area in front of this as well. All right, let's get some decorations for inside using these flowers that we can find right out behind this lighthouse. Oh, it's a chicken. Hi, chicken. Right, we're gonna use some of these, our little uh, pot, pot and uh, clay pot and uh, pottery uh, trick here to put some flowers in. Give it a nice, nice homey vibes inside the lighthouse keeper's place. And even a few on the shelves as well. All right, let's mix up these flowers so they're spread out, little color everywhere. And last but not least, the daisy. There we go. All right, we're gonna add in some chiseled bookshelves. You know, in theory, we could come out here and buy books and just leave them stored in these chiseled bookshelves uh, when we buy our mini books. And since we have those there, let's go ahead and just place those lanterns on top of those instead of hanging kind of awkwardly. Well, that has been today's episode. We have gotten our mending villager. We have moved him into this wonderful lighthouse. In the meantime, I'll be building some more farms and things and buildings back at our base. Uh, but the next episode is episode 25 and I want to spend that time fighting the final boss of Minecraft. So. Be sure to subscribe and look for that. Bye.